Well, let's move on to the Mayo story. Mike Finnerty is on the line. Good morning to you, Mike. How are you doing? Morning, Ger. How are things? Uh, just a, a quick, immediate reaction to the John Maughan news, a fifth county for John? Yeah, I, I'd love to know what the, the guys in Latterdon GA Club make of it. Uh, John, John is, has been managing Latterdon for the last two seasons, won a county junior title with them uh, last year, an historic county junior title. He was actually on the sideline with them on Sunday as well in the intermediate championship down here. So... Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Knowing John, he had everybody in the loop, and uh, they know they know exactly what the crack is. But um, I had heard he was he was in the mix for a couple of jobs in the, in the Midlands. All right, I uh, can't see him being in the frame for the Mayo job. I actually spoke to him a few weeks ago, um, shortly after Mayo lost to Kildare, and we we, we did a piece about Stephen Rochford uh, coming back or, or or his intentions. And uh, John ruled himself out fairly emphatically at that stage of ever going back into the Mayo job. He's he's done it a few times, and I think. Uh, that ship has sailed. Well, that's fair enough, really. Can we just ask a couple of basic questions that the rest of the country probably don't fully understand the 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 currents of the Mayo County Board? Are the current people who are in charge of football in Mayo at county board level the same people generally who would have been in charge when James Horan was there, or has a new executive come in in the meantime? Uh, there would be quite a few changes, but at the same time, there would be some people from that time still involved at one level or another. Uh, there obviously is a new county chairman, a new county secretary. Uh, the treasurer now would have held a number of other positions in the past and uh, would have been involved uh, during, during James's time at, at one stage. The executive tends to, to change or in some cases move around as well. So it's a kind of a mixture of, of some new faces and some of the, the old faces as well. So is James Horan a strong possibility for the job at this point? Or given that there was, a, it seemed like there was tension at the end of his time with the county board, are, is, is, has there been enough change basically for everybody to kind of say, look, we can draw a line under that and move on? Or is there too many of the same faces around for that to be a comfortable marriage into the future? Yeah, I think, I think that's a, a very good question and, and, and one of the, the big questions that I think you're going to see teased out over the next few weeks because obviously James has been linked with the job straight away. Um, no real surprise. He's obviously managing Westport at the moment. Uh, they've got a lot of the Mayo under 20s involved. Lee Keegan and Kevin Kane play with them as well. They've been going very well in the senior championship and the league as well. They're up near the top of Division 2 and James obviously has, has never made any secret of the fact that He'd like to manage Mayo again at some stage in the future, but whether or not the county board and, and James would be able to uh, to work together in 2019, it, it's impossible to say. Um, that there obviously is, is, a, is a bit of history there, and while there would have been quite a few, the, the individuals would have changed since he left at the end of 2014. There is still uh, a connection there at, at county board level, and nobody knows for sure, I suppose, just how how well or, or how, how uh, badly they, they actually got on or how that, that parting of the ways actually happened uh, in, in great detail. But I see already uh, he, he's among the favourites for, for the job. But uh, whether or not he's actually interested in it at this stage, again, it's well known. He's got a lot of media commitments. He's got a young family. He's got a very busy job. And uh, he's only just started this project in Westport as well, which... I suppose anybody who, who's, uh, who's plugged into Mayo football will know they are the coming club now. They've, they've swept the board at underage level. They're winning A championships hand over fist. And they really are building something. And they are really gunning for, for a first uh, Moclair Cup as well. So whether James Horne throws his hat in the ring, it'll, it'll have to, it, it remains to be seen. But if he doesn't, um, that shortlist, I think, is it, it, pretty short. There's no obvious candidate, I think, it's fair to say at this stage, um, jumping off the page. You mentioned there that we weren't quite privy to all the information regarding what happened with James Horne and the county board at that time. But it is, like, it's almost four years now at this point since James Horne did uh, leave the, his post as Mayo senior manager. What were the details we did know at the time? What was the exact division, uh, to the extent of your, of your knowledge, that happened there between uh, James Horne and the Mayo county board? Well, if memory serves me correct, it, it, was, it was really speculation at the time that, that James's working relationship with the board at that stage or the certainly the officers he was dealing with on a, on a regular basis had become strained. Um, 
it, it just wasn't it wasn't functioning at at a hundred percent. James had also given it uh, given it a few years, and I think the official line at the time was that he, he felt he needed a break, that the players needed a fresh voice. He brought them as far as he could, but there was that underlying sense, I think, in Mayo that if if the working relationship had been had been firing on all cylinders with with the chief officers at the time, he may have been tempted to go to go again to give it another shot, but. Those those positions have been filled by by different people now. Uh, whether or not the, the the things have moved on enough, or enough water has flowed under the bridge, it's impossible to tell. But by and large, I think James has, has pretty much kept his counsel on it uh, over the years. He hasn't got into it in huge detail, and and maybe maybe there is a, a blank page there. Maybe maybe the time is right. But I just have a feeling as well. There's such a such a big project on in Westport, and it's such an ambitious club that uh, you know that's going to be a big a big consideration for him as well. Can we just go back to the events of the last uh, 48 hours or so? Um, what we what we know, and, and you can correct me as I go along here. If, if um, mm-hmm. so, Stephen Rossford put forward a couple of names to join his backroom team to the county board. The county board didn't immediately ratify those. There was no actual meeting between Stephen and the county board, but the fact that they didn't ratify that immediately and called him to a meeting seems to have been the straw that broke the camel's back in that relationship. Is that a fair summation of what's happened? Yeah, I would think so. And, and I think you're right in saying the straw that broke the camel's back because, uh, you know, over the last three, four, five weeks, there have been a number of, of sort of uh, points along the way where, where you just wondered what exactly... W- what way the wind was blowing. I mean, maybe a month ago, before Stephen Rochford had spoken to, to the county chairman or to any of the senior officials, you had a, you had an interview in a, in a local paper down here where the county chairman expressed the view that he felt the backroom team needed to be freshened up, the squad needed to be freshened up, and that, you know, there was, there was a remedial action needed on a number of different fronts. And, and that struck a lot of people down here as, as, as strange, that that would appear in, in, in print before a conversation had taken place with the manager. And uh, then also, once Stephen Rochford a few weeks ago confirmed his intention to stay on, again, it would have struck a lot of us as, as odd that there was no official endorsement of, of Stephen uh, coming back as Mayo manager by, by any of the senior officials. Um, and again, last week's county board meeting last Thursday night, a deadline of this coming Friday was put down as, uh, as being the deadline that, that Stephen Rochford would have to have his management team in and, and on a sheet of paper. And again, that seemed, uh, considering a month went by after the Kildare game before anybody spoke to Stephen Rochford, and then all of a sudden the 31st of August was imposed as a deadline for having his management team in order. When you consider Mayo are obviously out of the championship, they don't play a game again until the 1st of January. That seemed... Uh, an unnecessary hurdle to put in front of him. But at the same time, he did get that management team put together. He informed the, the county board chairman on Saturday of, of the names he had on a sheet of paper, and uh, a decision was taken to hold an executive meeting on Sunday evening. Now, I am reliably informed that members, certain members of the executive were not happy that those two names, the names of Peter Ford and Shane Conway, were in the public domain on Saturday evening, Saturday night, and obviously, we broke the news on MayoNews.ie Saturday night that Peter Ford and Shane Conway were coming on board. But the reality is, those names were in the, the public domain on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. There were club championship games being played all across the county. And news travel fast. And in the, in, the current, in the current age of WhatsApp and social media, those names were always going to, to, to get out there. And once they did, and, and that news started to travel, uh, the whole thing started to pick up momentum. And I just get the sense that some members of the executive weren't happy that those names were in the public domain, and that obviously some of them may have found it out well, secondhand. Last question that, for you. That could have been an issue. Last question for you, Mike. Was it the fact that they're the current managers of Brafey and there is this fear within Mayo football that Brafey has become too powerful. That's code for it, that the O'Shea's are too powerful at the moment. Um, and that is the story that has been doing the round. So if you want to just uh, kill that yeah. myth for us, it may, might be no harm. Yeah, I was just saying to Tommy there off air a few minutes ago, I mean, there are a few myths doing the rounds about Mayo football over the last few years, uh, particularly since the, the heave in 2015. And, and one of them 
is that, that in some way a Brafie GA club exerts a huge influence over Mayo GA affairs, and in particular the Mayo senior team. Now, I've, I've been covering Mayo GA for a long, long time, and I, I'd like to think I've got a fairly good handle on it, and that nothing could be further from the truth. Um, Peter Ford is a ball and robe man. Shane Conway was born in, in, in England. He lives in Baal. He's got no connection with Brafie other than he's the joint manager of the Brafie senior team with Peter Ford. They've been there the last couple of years. And, you know, this, this, this uh, myth that in some way the Bracey players exert an influence over the manager or had some role in the picking of the last manager or in, in who goes in on, on backroom teams, uh, it, I think it suits the conspiracy theorists and it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a convenient truth for, for people who want to maybe use a stick to beat Mayo football. But uh, anybody who knows Stephen Rockford will tell you he's his own man. Uh, he showed that last night, I think, with, with the manner in which he, he dealt with this situation and, and in his statement. And uh, certainly uh, it's, it's, it's not fair on, on, on the Bracey Club and it's, it's not fair either on, on, on the O'Shea's and, and Rob Henley and guys like this that, that uh, all they want to do is play football for their county and, uh, you know, just, just get back to the business of, of playing matches again. Mike, great stuff. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. That's um, Mike Finnerty there. You can read more about that on mayonews.ie, as he said.